This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. You are listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. This is a production from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Previously on Robots of the Company. This is a production. What if I did? Then I couldn't. State of the art is a lemon! This ship seems to be rather confused. Chongo thinks we are not on Earth. And it all started with a jar of strawberry jam and a slice of lemon. Well, now you're speaking my language, sir. I thought I already was. <laughs> ah, forget it. And now, the thrilling conclusion. Do I have to say thrilling? I mean, I just really hate lying. You are listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 506, Insurrection on the Botnik, part 1, written by Vince Staden. is the docking bay. I can tell by the huge sign on the wall that says docking bay in pink neon. Yeah, GD stole it from a nightclub. It originally said something else, so I made him change the first two letters to a D and an O. <laughs> you must miss all that, Punch. Profane messages in pink neon? Are you kidding, Kika? Why would I miss that? You should have seen the sign GD put on the observation deck. No, I meant you must miss being in command. Nope. Not for a second. I was captain of the Titan I for 63,000 cargo drops. And during that time, I only ever managed to safely drop off precisely one cargo. The rest of the time, I was trying desperately to survive being attacked by giant mutant lizards, space sharks, pirates, robot assassins, giant mutant robot lizard shark pirate assassin hybrids, and my ex-wives. I'd been thrown into a black hole, taken out of time and space, tortured, killed, resurrected, imprisoned, turned into a human being, and kidnapped. I've stared death in the face, and I've been swallowed by a plot hole. Besides, nobody ever really obeyed my orders anyway. You've been rehearsing that speech for a while, I can tell. So, what was the cargo you managed to safely deliver anyway? I'd rather not say, Kika. It's rather embarrassing. I promise not to laugh. That's nice of you and all, but... Let's just drop the subject and get on with the job we've been given, which is to hand over total control of the ship and all its crew to whoever, or whatever, is about to come through those doors. Yeah, about that. Don't you think we ought to put up some resistance? Perhaps open fire on the intruders and let them know we won't go down without a fight? Absolutely not. Faced with a ship armed to the teeth with pulse cannons, frag slices, photonic torpedoes, and all sorts of weapons of mass destruction, our new commander has made the executive decision to... surrender. And you approve of this spineless, craven-hearted, cowardly decision? Yep. It's exactly what I would have done. Did you know, computer, that yachts were originally racing vessels with their high sails, lightweight hulls, they could cut through the water and at incredible speeds. Captain Lulu Bell, your observation is illogical. This vessel, the Devil's Tooth, is not a racing yacht, and we are not on a large body of H2O. We are in deep space, approaching a galaxy-class company cargo ship called the Titan II. Yeah, I know, I know. I was just saying that originally. Oh, it doesn't even matter. You got no soul, computer. No heart. You can stop the sound effects now. You've ruined the moment. 
In fact, remind me to have your circuitry ripped out when we get back to the botnet. Aye, aye, Captain. We are about to dock with the Titan too, Captain. Excellent. Okay, this is the plan. Accompanied by impressively armed, mentally unstable, and probably psychotic security droids, I board the Titan too. I then demand the captain of the Titan II, immediately hands over the ship's engineer. The captain of the Titan II refuses. The security droids do their impressively and mentally unstable psychotic thing to the captain of the Titan II. Then the captain of the Titan II, now in considerable pain, happily agrees to hand over his ship's engineer. We return to the Botnik, our new engineer fixes his damage to hyperdrive, and I slip into a cocktail. I believe, Captain Lulubel, that you meant to say you will slip into a cocktail dress. You only think that because you've never seen one of my cocktails. Captain Lulubel, you have an incoming communication from the Botnik. Patch it through. Puny, insignificant robot, identified as Lulubel. Oh, hi, Daddy. Do not address me as Daddy Pumpkin while I'm trying to inform you that I and my fellow crewmates are about to mutiny. Now just listen attentively to this message. You have been deemed unsuited for command of the Potnik. You have been relieved of command, and you will be executed immediately. You will be obliterated, annihilated, reduced to atoms, and then atomized. Just remember that Daddy loves you, precious. Hello? Hello? Say it again. There could be. He is not responding. I do not think. The message didn't get through. Say it again, Excelsior. We have to... Could be a gull that flew into the communications thingy. Communications array. Hey. It's called a communications array, Captain. You meant to say that a seagull could have flown into the communications array, which isn't accurate either since we're not at freaking sea. I was just trying to help, you harpy. Just ignore him, Excelsior, and repeat your message. I do not think I can remember everything I said. If I relay the message again, I fear that I will get it wrong and the threats will have reduced impact. Oh, for the love of... <laughs> Happy, what are you wearing on your head? It's a baseball cap, Skipper. All pilots wear them. I've been watching Top Gun. Ow! You hit me! Why did you do that? I warned you never to call me Skip or Skipper, Happy. I have a zero tolerance policy towards this kind of thing. Now, since, against my better judgment, you are the Titan II's new pilot, I've been checking your performance records. Permission to leave the bridge, sir. What for? I feel nauseous, Captain James, sir. That makes two of us happy. Permission denied. Now, I'm going to play some black box recordings of company missions on which you were the designated pilot. This is from your first mission. That's the Pluto 19, a repair craft. Well, she's beyond repair now. According to the company report, there was one survivor. The pilot walked away without a scratch. That's not true. My diodes ached for weeks. This is the Invincible, a warship. One of the mightiest vessels in the company armada, she helped seal the victory at the Battle of Rogan Point. Sounds fine to me. That's before she picked up a new pilot. I'll skip the recording ahead to moments after a pilot called Happy joins the crew. The Invincible, which wasn't quite as invincible as her name suggested, had but one survivor. How do you walk away from that one, huh? Oh, I got lucky. Yeah, you got lucky. But the other 3,016 bots aboard the Invincible weren't quite as lucky as you happy, were they? 
I guess not, Jimbo. Not when you put it like that. Ow! You hit me again! What was that for, Jimmy lad? All right. So, should we send the message again? My idea is that... Does it involve swabbing? Because I've had quite enough of that. I never, ever want anything to do with swabbing ever again. Ever! In fact, I want the word swabbing obliterated from every dictionary in the universe. Obliterated and replaced with the word... You know, Captain, while I agree with your dislike of the activity of swabbing, you can be incredibly juvenile at times. Yeah? <laughs> Here's what I think of that. Get a grip, man. If you'd stop being so childish for a moment, you'd realize that we will never have to swab the decks ever again because we have control of the botnik. Now, Excelsior, what was your idea? My idea is that we send another message to Captain Lulabella aboard the Devil's Tooth. But this time, we don't use puny words. We send a message by unleashing maximum firepower upon the Devil's Tooth, destroying Captain Lulabelle with extreme prejudice. <laughs> Ooh, I like that idea. No. I love that idea. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. Inspired. Excellent. Then the insurrection can begin. are an albatross, a harbinger of doom, a Jonas. You are the worst pilot in the history of the universe, and you spell certain death to any crew member unlucky enough to be on board with you. Happy, you are precisely the type of bot I need. An albatross, is that right? Exactly. You see, Happy, we are about to be boarded by heavily armed intruders. They no doubt want the Titan II and all its cargo, and I'm going to give it to them. I've already told the crew that we have unconditionally surrendered. There will be no resistance. Pooch and Kika will meet the intruders and tell them that the Titan II is theirs for the taking. I have one stipulation. The crew is to be allowed to abandon ship. All my crew, that is, except you. Me, Captain? Yes, you, Happy. You will remain on board and join the intruders. And one day soon, the captain of some poor ship will be listening to a playback recording of the final moments of the Titan II, and he will be wondering how you managed to survive the wreckage. You mean, Captain, that you want me to deliberately destroy the Titan II and kill all the intruders? Not at all. Just be yourself, Happy. That's all I ask. Good day. What's your covers? Oh, God, it's the computer again. I've got some bonds and news for you, Drongos. Has anyone got an Australian to English dictionary? I don't understand a word of this. Stroth, Bruce. I reckon you're not the full quit, but anyways. Some ship called the Devil's Tooth is docked with the Titan too. now ain't that a beaut? I think I got some of that. The intruders have docked. Good on you, bloke. Now you're talking my language. The rainbow has many colours. Does anyone else feel like sunbathing on the fjords? We shall dance through the never-ending winter. Tittle pip, what ho? No, you've lost me again. You're just speaking gibberish now. I think some of it was in Norwegian, Captain. It was a computer like this one aboard the Indestructible. It had three personality modes. Old English off, vulgar Australian, and mad Norwegian scientist. Yeah, those are the options Boffin mentioned. Trouble is, the computer seems to be all three at once. My brain is flitting over the ice tundra. Watson Matilda, Watson Matilda, you'll come a watson Matilda with me. I say, chaps, I think I might be a few sandwiches short of a picnic. What? <laughs> it's mad. The computer is totally mad. <sighs> Boffin! <laughs> Oh, 
uphold this, Kika. What is it, Pudge? It's a white flag. The universal symbol of surrender. Universal sign of being a chicken, you mean? Bop, bop, bop. An ugh. This white flag is just a scummy handkerchief tied to a stick. Greetings. I am Captain Lulabel of the Botnik. Hey, it's Squeak and Excelsior's kid. Well, one of them anyway. Ah, oh, yes. It's you. Captain Thingy, right? Captain Potch, exactly. Well, not exactly. I mean, not anymore. I'm just plain old administrator bot again, and I've just been sent down here to the airlock to welcome you aboard. And, uh, by the way, we surrender. Allow me to introduce my impressively armed, mentally unstable, psychopathic security droids. This is Killer. Hello. I know a funny. What was the last thing that go through a bot's head after I given him a snap? Give up? These legs. <laughs> and this is Bruiser. I don't know no funnies, aight? Well, that's a relief. Now say hello to my little friend. Oh no, I've seen that film. We're goners. He's a teeny yellow canary. Yes, you are. I got him TPG. Phew, what a relief. Swell, but we still surrender. I don't want your ship. I just need your engineer. My ship has damage to its warp drive. I have a crew vacancy for a ship's engineer. It's a permanent position. And Bruiser and Killer here... Don't forget my little friend! Of course. Killer, Bruiser, and Cheapy Cheap. The most terrifying yellow canary chick in the galaxy are here to ensure that I get what I want. Did I mention that we surrender? All weapon systems now at maximum capacity! Target lock on the Devil's Tooth, Excelsior. Let's blow Captain Lulabelle to the other side of the galaxy. Yeah, his payback time. Nobody makes me swab the decks and lives to tell the tale. Wait! The Devil's Tooth has docked with the Titan too. We can't destroy one without risking serious damage to the other! So? Yeah, so? What's the problem? Good point! Just checking. In that case, let's blast them out of the sky! You have been listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 506. Insurrection on the Botnik, part one. Yep, it's not over yet, in case you didn't figure out that whole cliffhanger thing. Anyway, it was written by Vince Staden, and it starred, in order of appearance, Danny Cutler as Kika, Joe Thomas as Putch, Kim Russell as Lou LaBelle, Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard as the Botnik computer, Peg Gray as Excelsior, Shane Harris as Brick Jammer, Cat Waterflame as Duke, Steve Anderson as Captain James, Jonathan Patrick Russell as Happy, David Alt as the Titan 2 Computer, and Jonathan Patrick Russell as Killer and Bruiser. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod. The associate producer and post-production editor was Jeff Niles. The co-producer was Vince Staden. The sound designer, script editor, producer, and director was none other than Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series Robots of the Company was created by that dude, Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. And if you'd like to me, email us, that's email us, with any of your comments or questions, you may do so at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. I'll say no more for now. We didn't even realize we were making a two-parter during the making of this audiogram. <laughs> Be sure to join us next time as this ever-expanding adventure actually concludes. So, until then, this is the Creditor, as always, asking you to please stay tuned. This has been a production of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2009. All rights reserved. 
This is an urgent message from Cypher. When undergoing various uh, undergoings for the evil plan, it has come to my attention that these children, these voices, have risen in a mutiny against us. This, of course, is suboptimal. They must be stopped at all costs. I think I speak for all mankind when I say the evil plan must continue. <laughs> yes, it must. <laughs> anyway, we have set up a trap for these kid agents, and they will be dealt with soon enough. Don't believe me. Just listen. I'm just gonna cut one of them! No, wait! Why haven't they reported in for the past two days? Two of your agents have been injured in the line of duty. Oh my god, Josh, are you okay? Miss, miss, can you please step back? Say something comforting to Josh. Better you than me? Many believe the Wordtastic Podcast to be the greatest podcast of all time. And season two bears no exception. We'll have more action. More laughs. laughs. What is wrong with you? More drama.